All right, everybody. We think it's right at seven o'clock, so we'll call our meeting to order. Jess, off for all time's sake, you want to lead us in the pledge? Sure. I'm going to ask everybody to remain standing for one minute after the pledge, too. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I would ask everybody, I'm not sure if you've heard the sad news, sorry, Shirley, um, but Cal Hemingway passed away on Saturday evening. For those of you that don't know, Cal was a long time um, servant to our community and our uh, education and our kids and our schools and our parents for decades and decades, uh, both on the school board and um, on the Granby Education Foundation and many, many other roles. So if you're uh, willing, I'd ask everybody just to take a moment and uh, remember Cal and send whatever good energy you can to his family. Okay, thank you for that. All right, next, before we get to the minutes, uh, we have a proclamation that we would like to present to Jazz Orlock, our uh, student, one of our two student reps who's graduating this year and moving on to the next challenges in life, right? Yeah. All right, so come on down. I'm going to read it, and we'll take a picture with the board, and Mom and Dad, you come up, take whatever pictures you want. <laughs> Reading things is actually one of the my weaknesses, so if I screw up, forgive me. So I'm just going to read the proclamation. It comes from the board, and it says, Whereas the town of Granby recognizes that Charles Chaz Orlock served as student liaison to the Board of Selectmen for the past two years, and whereas Chaz Orlock's ability to balance academics, sports, and school activities while also serving as an active member of the Board of Selectmen is admirable and can be witnessed through the following. Whereas Chaz Orlock was captain of the varsity basketball team during his junior and senior year and captain of both the soccer and baseball team during his senior year. And whereas Chaz Orlock is a member of the National Honor Society and took on microeconomics as an independent study and sat for the microeconomics AP exam. We're going to ask you to do a presentation on that tonight. <laughs> Sorry to surprise you. And whereas Chaz Orlock is class treasurer for the class of 2024, and whereas Chaz Orlock is a referee for youth soccer and volunteered for the 2023 Empty Bowls event at the high school. Now, therefore, I, Mark Fiorentino, by the powers vested in me as first selectman of the town of Granby, and on behalf of the entire board of selectmen, do hereby proclaim that Charles Orlock be recognized by all residents of Granby for his service to the town as a member of the board of selectmen and his accomplishments as a student during his four years at Granby Memorial High School. And it's signed and dated this third day of June, 2024. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> we got to get a little better at that protocol. Right? <laughs> Jazz, in all seriousness, thank you for everything you've done for our board and for our town and for the school. You want to say anything? Why don't you tell us where you're going? Uh, I'm going to Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania and playing soccer there. Awesome. Well, congrats. Yeah. You stay in touch? I will. Yeah. yeah. Thank do. you guys so much for the opportunity. It's yeah. been awesome. All right. You going to study economics? Hopefully. Good choice. You still have a good choice to study economics? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> it's a great major. They told you there's a lot of math involved in economics, right? Like the math. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, we will move on to the um, approval of the minutes. The first set of minutes we have is from our regular meeting on May 20th. Move that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of May 20th. Second. Any questions, comments, suggested revisions? All right, if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, the next set of minutes is from um, our um, Neighborhood Assistant Act um, public hearing, also on May 20th. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes from the May 20th Neighborhood Assistant Act meeting. Second. Any questions, comments, suggested revisions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. I don't believe we have um, any suggested appointments. No old business, so we'll move on to the regular business. The first item is a presentation from our school projects building committee, Chair Toby Proctor and Mark Migliaccio. You're welcome to add anything you want. You, Catherine, you, you have a... Okay, so come on up, Toby, to the podium. and Thank you for coming. Just a reminder for everybody, this is kind of something we started this year. We're asking our various different boards and commissions and committees to come and tell us um, what you've been working on, what you see coming. So have at it. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. Uh, I'll be uh, next slide, please. Uh, Toby Proctor, uh, two Silver Brook, North, North Granby. Connecticut. Um, today we're just chatting a little bit about uh, the school building committee, which has been actually surprisingly <laughs> up and running for four and a half years <laughs> at this point. Um, as you know, we did a, uh, a townwide present or a townwide bond referendum in June of 2019, and we um, at the time uh, the manager John Ward gave us this charge, which essentially tells us <clears throat> that we were uh, created to um, essentially we were created to um, prioritize the list of projects that were given to us by the CPAC uh, committee and then prepare and evaluate any bid packages that that, uh, that we would ask for uh, any either architects or any construction uh, groups to to do the, the the building, and then also report any completions of the projects to to the board of selectmen and hand them over to the board of education when uh, when they are complete. Uh, that was the that was the charge that we were given. Next slide, please. <coughs> um, our current members today are I'm the chair. Um, Mark Megliaccio is the vice chair. We have uh, we had former uh, BOE representative. Uh, Jenny Emery, and now current uh, Board of Education representative is Dol uh, not, sorry, Donna Noland, and um, Bill Kennedy is the Board of Finance rep, <clears throat> and Eric Brown is our industry ex expert. And then our ex officio and professional advice members are as follows. Sherry Burke is our superintendent of schools. Mike Walsh, town manager. We have Mike Dunn, who is the principal of GM and GMHS and Shannon Sullivan is director of facilities over at the schools and then 
Uh, I know this is not open now, but I'm sorry, I don't know who the new business manager is as, is, as of a couple, uh, couple weeks ago. Um, just a, a quick note, we actually have had three superintendents <laughs> while we've been uh, uh, aboard. We had Dr. Idley, he was, um, he was very instrumental in putting the CPAC uh, list together before we got it handed over to us. And then Dr. Uh, uh, Grossman had taken over shortly before we, uh, we stood the committee up, and now we have Sherry Brown. And then we have also had um, three town managers <laughs> at the time as well, um, and two business managers. So we've gone through a whole fun fun bunch of folks to uh, to re-educate us and guide us in the way at the same time. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this uh, this slide just talks about the the actual uh, the bonding wording that was uh, that we all voted on in June of 2019. Um, I just want to bring to your attention there's a lettered list there. Um, the science, career, and technology education spaces performing arts facilities, library and media center, um, kitchen facilities, athletic fields, and then infrastructure and systems at various campuses. Um, I know this is written relatively broadly so that we could fit a whole bunch of stuff in, so I think that actually fit the bill for what we, we got. Uh, next slide, please. So what we did get was a list of uh, this was, list was created and compiled by the uh, CPAC committee, um, and I apologize if the if the look is a little weird, but that's exactly how I got it. So I typed it up exactly how I had it and how it was handed us, handed to us. So, as you can see, um, there were no. I have not put any associated um, estimate of costs or what we estimated to get uh, reimbursed from the state. Um, at this time, I was I wanted to make this a bit more broad uh, conversation about what we've done over the last uh, two years uh, instead of actually going by exactly what we have uh, spent and how much uh, money is left. So we, on purpose, excluded some of that from the presentation. Um, and the, I just want to make sure that I uh, fully acknowledge that we are needing to discuss to the Board of Selectmen what uh, what projects have been completed and how much co they cost at each so that we could uh, have a reconciliation of exactly what the bond money was. So I, I recognize that will be forthcoming. Next slide, please. So this one, <clears throat> this is the same list, but actually has our, the committee was uh, asked to prioritize that list because uh, the $7.1 million, which was bonded for uh, very quickly, was obvious, and actually the then town uh, manager, John Ward, asked us to, to prioritize because the estimated costs for all of those projects were a almost a back of the napkin type thing. So we have uh, we recognized they needed to be prioritized and attacked uh, via that prior, prioritization because we probably would not have enough money for all all of those 13, uh, 13 lists. 13 items. So how we did that was <clears throat> we recognized the middle school roof and the high school roof were the oldest uh, and most straightforward. Uh, we said straightforward then, but they actually became not so straightforward. <laughs> uh, middle school roof was, was at the time was 26 years old and um, the high school roof was 20, uh, actually 19 years old. Um, and I'll get back to the timing of that in a second, but that was why those were one and two. Uh, number three, uh, the the uh, the building one staircase. If you recall, there was a safety issue with how the staircase in building one was just a mess, and egress was a problem. So um, both, actually, that and then also the kitchen number four were noted on the uh, the New England uh, Association for Schools and Colleges as a, a they weren't going to de uh, decertify us, but they kept mentioning that every single time they came and <laughs> did a recertification. So we're like, okay, those are got to be a priority for the uh, for our committee to, to attack first. Um, and then you'll see there, number five, is the instrument and ensemble, ensemble room. And, well, sorry, 4A and 4B, 
Four A, four and five were co essentially co-located in the in the uh, high school. So we, uh, when we did finally get a architect, they suggested we kind of bundle that in as one specific phase of the project. And it did make sense because had we done two different sections of the building, it would have been probably not as cost effective as, as it was. And then, as you can see. Um, Six was the, uh, the library and the media center. Seven was the storage space and the auditorium access. Uh, storage space for some of the, uh, I think there was performing arts. And then uh, auditorium access in the back is very hard to get stuff onto, onto the stage. So they wanted to have some kind of a, a bit more industrial way to get back onto the stage from the back backstage. Um, and then eight was relocate the science classrooms. Nine was bathrooms on the athletic fields, and then 10 was more uh, more light bulbs. And as you can see here, I've, I have highlighted the, col the colors that we've actually done, um, and either partially or uh, partially funded or uh, mostly finished also for the, uh, for the college and, and career ready. And I'm sorry, it, it goes without saying it. At any point, please interrupt me if you have any questions. Um, any questions on that? The, the reason why three and eight were together were, were the, those ended up being because of the staircase was um, was a safety issue. It it became easier to parse those off and pay for them via um, mostly well I said yeah it was actually mostly small cap fund the BOE small cap fund and then some of the bond fund and they were co-located so the, those uh, science classrooms were right next to the um, since the stairwell, so they could be done very quickly together. Any questions? Yes. Thank you. Before you before you go on, is um, is the reason you didn't put the boilers on there? Is that just because they're too weak? Re they're too recent. recent. Yeah. Okay. I will I will discuss boilers. Okay. But yeah, that that was the original list that did not have. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, boilers on. All right. Um, a couple other comments on this were. Uh, we, we did want to prioritize yeah, the safety first, and then those four, the first four were all the um, New England uh, Association for Schools and, um, and Colleges was the big, the big push for that. Any, any questions on this? Next slide, please. So um, taking the, the order from what we did last year and what we did this year, Realize we've done stuff before last year. <laughs> so uh, what we were working on at the beginning of last year was kind of the wrap up of that phase one portion of the uh, uh, of that list. And the phase one was the cafeteria, the kitchen, culinary arts, which was the career ready, um, and then chorus and band room. So those were all co-located, as you know, in the in the uh, high school, and um, it was essentially a brand new. You know, uh, got it all the way to the ground, and we had to build it all the way to the. Um, you know, it was not a renovation; it was essentially new, new building for much of that whole area. Um, and then, please keep in mind that 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 space is actually also used for uh, for a lot of public uh, gatherings. So we recognize it was probably important for us to to attack that as well, uh, because I know uh, the public is always asked to come into the. Uh, the common space uh, when they do things in the the auditorium or they do uh, presentations at the high school. Um, and the other thing, the uh, the con again, the concept of the reconstruction was that it was important that um, that area was taken care of all in one one time and in, in one uh, construction phase. Next slide, please. Uh, this and this was my my point about it, it being essentially from scratch, which um, actually, you know, we had absolutely no kitchen in there. When when people see the word kitchen on there, okay, it's not putting a, a couple ovens and a you know a microwave in there. It's it's talking about making an actual kitchen that works for pre preparing and also you know anything to do with. Uh, Serving the, the food as well, but also the the commons area that was the cafeteria was completely redone as well. 
and also the uh, the ceilings had to be gutted so that we could do a lot more HVAC and uh, a lot more plumbing in the area for uh, for gas uh, and and also air. Um, so this next part is about the high school roof. The next portion of the process that we were working on last year was the high school roof. Um, a little history here was that to us, the high school roof in 2022 was at that point now 21 years old or 22 years old. But for the state, because we, and someone can explain this a little bit better than I, than I can, but because our board of, select, board of Ed did not sign off on it 16 years ago, the state thought it was only 16 years old. So we were not allowed to get, we were not allowed to actually put, uh, put forth a budget, uh, sorry, a project request for this into the uh, into the state. So we had to go through a whole legislative process to get that appealed and also um, a waiver put in, put in place and prove that it was actually at that point, 22 or 23 years old at that point. So that we could get it. So that that took up, as you can guess, any kind of legislative activity takes up quite a bit of time. That was probably a nine month period before we could get um, the state to say, okay, you can actually have a, 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 a project number and you can go out to bid for this thing. And the other the other problem right in 2022 was that, as, as you as we all remember, the supply uh, supply issues with because of COVID was ridiculous at this point. What we thought was going to originally going to be about 2.3, uh, no, sorry, uh, $2.1 million. Actually, we had a, a new qu uh, quote that came in, came in close to 3.9 million because of all the new, all the uh, supplies that were completely uh, overpriced and uh, hard to get. And so we started to, I won't say panic, but we started to think maybe we shouldn't do this in 22. Maybe we should wait for one more year. At that point, we actually didn't have to, to do it in the summer of 22 because this all has to be done when the students aren't there. At this point, we didn't have time to put the uh, bid forward uh, or uh, get any bids back before the summer of 22. So that actually worked in our favor by the, by the time we did put a bid package together in January of 23, uh, the prices had come down drastically and we were, we were able to get about a three, uh, sorry, two point four million dollar bid from uh, from our uh, con uh, construction firm. So um, what happened in 2023 is we put the uh, October, sorry, uh, by August of 2023, it was what's called uh, complete or uh, su substantially complete. And then unfortunately, we started seeing leaks all over the place throughout all of 2023, and. We went through, uh, we went to the manufacturer, the, uh, the architect was going back and forth between the, the builder and the manufacturer trying to figure out the uh, uh, root cause of this. Um, and thankfully, because it's under warranty, it was under, it, it was to no cost of Granby, we could, uh, we could get, we could figure out what the root cause of that work was. It was taken care of in most of the summer of 20, or 2024, all the, the leaks. Uh, we did have, uh, I think we had a, a big storm in maybe uh, April time frame or maybe end of end of March that had slush involved, which we were happy to, surprisingly happy to have because it was a good indication that um, that all of those repairs were were complete and and there was no more uh, no more leaks at the time. So uh, as of about two weeks ago, I think all the, the rework was completed, which was almost 40% of the, the roof had to be re, uh, reflashed and also more membrane put on top. But then they, they put black membrane on and we, we, we bought a white roof. So we said, we well, you got to put it white, <laughs> white membrane on. <laughs> and that added some, some, uh, some time, but not, not cost of anything. So we now have a completed white roof uh, with no leaks at this time. Uh, when we do have the last final inspection that's supposed to happen probably in the next week or two, we'll um, hand that over to the Board of Education as complete. Any questions on this? Next slide, please. 
So now over the next couple months, or next several months, uh, there's roughly about $549,000 left in the bond, uh, from bond pr proceeds. And then uh, the Board of Selectmen has asked us to fund and oversee the installation of the three uh, boilers in the middle school. Um, that's critical. You, you all know it very well because you uh, just voted on it last week, so a couple weeks ago. Um, and the contract is a fixed $424,000 bid. I believe it's signed, essentially signed and delivered. It's not right. Yeah. And then that's going to commence in the summer because, again, it's a summer activity for the uh, school and will be complete by the end of this summer. Uh, any remaining funds will be more than likely returned to the to the town because there are insufficient amount to have to uh, be able to attack anything else left on that, that list. Uh, and then at that point, we will ask you what our future is as a, as a committee. So any uh, any questions for me on that? Is that the last slide? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll go we'll up and down. Um, be, before we do, I just um, I want to make sure that I committed to Toby that um, uh, we would get in a lot of details about the final uh, costing because they're going to come back and give us, as Toby said, a very detailed description of every every single project. And as you'll remember, when we were doing the question for the voters to transfer some money from bridges that we didn't need for bridges. The, I asked the committee if at the end of the process they would be willing to give us an honest, straightforward you know, debriefing on uh, what we might do differently in the in the next process going forward. They're committed to doing that. So that's a future date. Um, and having said that, does anybody else have any, any questions or comments? Um, so there were projects listed on the original bond package that weren't done. Are those still on the school's list of projects they'd like to have completed? I believe there are. Yes, I believe they are. Uh, although, Mark, I mean, Mike, I know you went through a process of asking the, bo the Board of Education to come up with all of their lists. I'm not too sure. I haven't seen the list, so I'm assuming it's, it, it is the same since they... It is. Yeah. We didn't. We weren't able to attack. Thank you. I have no questions. Thank you. I don't have any questions, but I want to thank uh, all of you board members again. This was a, um, a tremendously challenging committee to sit on. I mean, all of the committees are, have to work hard, the building committees in particular. But as you mentioned, you guys went through the kind of the perfect storm of just one um, unpredictable thing after another with in terms of COVID and the complexity of those projects. and. Wrong, right, or indifferent, we, we, we did what we told the public we were going to do. We asked them to approve a broader list, knowing that we were not likely to build everything on the list. And you guys were challenged with trying to prioritize that. And then, of course, you didn't even count me in the town managers that you no, asked for. Right. So there were <laughs> three superintendents four. and four <laughs> town managers oh, in a four-year process. It's really, thank you very much for the commitment and the effort that you guys put into managing those projects. And um, again, just recently, um, when we asked you to step up and manage the boiler project and see that that be done, uh, never hesitated to say yes, we'll do that. So th thank you very much. It's a, we're very grateful for the work you guys did. Thank you. Yeah, and I was gonna say, it's great that you were able to step up and do the boiler. Just out of curiosity, the white roof, is it cooler? It is a cooler. It's also, um, I believe, I think that's the main reason, but I, it is more, um, I think maintenance-wise, it might be a little bit easier to, to see either cracks or, or blemishes as well. So that might be uh, a portion of the reason. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, no questions. Thanks for your time and all, right. all your work. All right, thank you very much. Did you have anything? Yeah, I, I just want to uh, also thank you, Toby and mm -hmm. Mark as well, uh, uh, Donna, the other members of the committee, Eric, and so forth. Um, the boilers were important uh, to the Board of Education, and to see the work that you did on the high school roof 
um, was also Yeoman's work. This is a, a good introduction. I'll just make a, a minute or two comment. Uh, at the next Board of Selectmen meeting on the 17th, they will receive a document that represents a 10-year capital improvement plan for both the Board of Education, including those projects that weren't done, as well as the town. It's a total of about $78 million, and it's a process that should keep pace with the upcoming budget. I, I know we just settled the budget, but it'll just be uh, you know uh, the next few months where we're into the fall again and starting again. It's, it's that quick. But there's uh, 33 million and change on the board side of, of items that you know don't need immediate attention, but it'll allow the town to prioritize those and about 44 million and change on the town side, totaling about 78 million. <clears throat> and as part of the budget process, um, the CPAC committee could kick off. Uh, it's it's up to the Board of Selectmen how they want to reconstitute that, when they re want to reconstitute that. But it's a good opportunity to get introduced or reintroduced to the, to the issues that the town faces with respect to infrastructure, and then take it as a decision as part of the budget. Do we fund it with leasing? Do we fund it with cash? Do we fund it with a long-term bond initiative? And so forth. Um, it's, it's more of a process. Uh, oriented solution and you know I want to thank you Mark the other members of the board for uh, you know launching it if you will and we'll see how how it endures over the uh, over the fall and into the winter right. oh thank you thank you very much thank you. Right, anything Mark all right we'll move on to the next item on our agenda which is a presentation from the Lions Club chairman Tony Capelli Thank you, uh, board, for giving me the opportunity to talk about something I love, and that's the Granby Lions. Um, the Granby Lions have been here um, in the town of Granby serving our community uh, since the 1950s, and we still have original founding members in our club. It's just amazing. Um, we most recently um, have added members. Um, we'll be inducting five new members uh, tomorrow night. Um, we inducted 11 new members last year. We're the fastest growing Lions Club in our district. So something to be really proud of. And it kind of reflects the spirit of volunteerism in our town. And uh, really, um, it's great to see. People come out to our fundraisers. They always have nice things to say. Uh, one of our members just said uh, to me that Lions makes serving fun. So uh, that's really what we strive to do. And uh, that's the nux of, of what we do. Um, I'm going to list some of the things and uh, some of the projects that we've been doing over the past year. Um, but it's really, um, we're Granby centric but we also know that there's need outside of our community. So um, we have been focusing uh, some more donations on um, more um, places that are in extreme need, um, where the people of Granby um, who support us allow us to donate funds for those projects as well. In particular, um, there was a, a project called Boots with Care, um, donating boots and uh, socks and gloves to the homeless in Hartford. Um, so the Granby Lions made a donation to that, and we sent members down to help distribute to that, um, to that need in November. Uh, there is also um, a, a food drive um, for uh, food share, the turkey trot. Um, so Granby Lions collect uh, turkeys in front of Geisler's, and we send that to food share. So that's another way we're serving our greater community. We donate to where there uh, is need for disaster relief. So uh, Lions is an international organization, and especially if there's need within the United States, if there's a tornado, a hurricane, um, they call all the Lions clubs and say, what can you do to help make this uh, you know, uh, better for the people there? And the Lions is able to distribute their funds very, very quickly. So we're one of the first people there um, with funds to be able to help the community right away before maybe some other funds come in from the government and, and other sources. Um, this fall, we um, kind of partnered with uh, the American Legion, which was new. Um, we had a cooperative collection of toys uh, for the Connecticut Children's Medical Center. And we also brought in um, Amazon 
their warehouses and they collected toys for us. We wound up with over a thousand toys, um, priced at over maybe $15,000 was our estimate that we brought to the children's hospital. And they go to um, the, uh, the programs throughout the state of Connecticut um, where there's children in the hospital or their siblings um, that are coming to visit those children um, for having something uh, to give them and, and to occupy their time while they're, they're at the hospital. Um, we have volunteers at Waste Not Want Not that go there every week um, to help feed uh, the people of Granby. We're organizing a blood drive on June 20th. Uh, that's coming up around the corner. That's going to be at St. Therese. We donated and cleaned and maintained the town gazebo in the center of town. We keep a watchful eye on that. We maintain flags in the center of town. Um, we just ran a bunch of um, things in the uh, ads in the drummer asking for donations to sponsor a flag. And we have a bunch of new flags up there. And uh, they're going up and down. Um, our main streets here, we want to extend that as far as we can, um, especially north of the town. Um, but we, it's a long process, and the Department of Public Works has been very helpful in helping us put up the flags and take them down and organize them. And so that's been a really cool project. And a lot of our neighboring towns also do that. So it's nice to see that Granby also participates in that. We collect glasses throughout the year. We just had a shred day on May 18th um, as a community service project. Uh, we just held a, a diabetes uh, guest speaker at our club to learn about the causes of diabetes, um, and we learned about lifestyle medicine. So um, that's something that we'll be exploring as a club uh, for our members and maybe getting it out to the town as well. Um, we're really interested in keeping us healthy as well. We sponsor a children's Christmas party for children of special needs. Um, that happens in mid-December. And the Lions uh, fund it, they organize it, and whatever school can send their students to it. Um, it's a two-day event. We have a band and, and all that kind of stuff, food. And the children and their caretakers come to the special event. And it's really talked about and looked forward to within the classrooms of our area schools. We do children's eye screenings in September and October. Um, we screen all the children in our Granby schools as well as the daycare facilities. On donations, um, we've been um, fortunate to uh, be being able to have some very significant fundraisers. Um, so we have increased our donations. Um, this year, we added Camp Rising Sun. Um, it's for children affected by cancer. We made a donation to them. Um, Granby Park and Rec came to us for benches for the new walking path um, in, in the park, in Salmonbrook Park. Um, we were able to fund a couple benches. Um, we helped with the Granby High School baseball and softball teams by uniforms. Um, we sponsored, um, well, in partly sponsored, a uh, safe graduation night at the high school. Um, Connecticut Veterans Eye Research Foundation at Yale and at UConn, we made donations to them. Um, they uh, originally developed um, a, a control for glaucoma. They were the first ones that discovered that. And it's not cured, glaucoma's not cured, but um, Lyons contributed to making glaucoma um, a, a controllable um, illness for people. Um, we help fund the uh, high school Leo club. Um, we have a, a club at your high school, and uh, the Leos are, are pretty active this year, and they're just getting going. We'll hope to see more from them next year, um, but uh, we're help, we help the Leo club. Robotics club comes to us. We, we support them. Um, tomorrow night, we'll also be giving out scholarships to uh, three students at the high school. Um, so that's a big part of where our, our funds go that we collect. Connecticut Low, Lions Low Vision Center, we support that. That's where um, people that are in need of low vision devices like magnifiers, maybe bump dots, um, and just 
articles of daily living that they can't get elsewhere can come to the Lions Low Vision Clinics and an occupational therapist meets with them and is able to give them some things to take home to make their life easier. Um, so that's what we support in that. I'm also on that board. Uh, Grammy Little League, we make donations to them. Um, Grammy Ambulance Association. Uh, and our newest initiative, uh, Veterans. Um, we've been, um, there's a, what they call a veteran stand down uh, in the fall, in September. And it's uh, operated at the Veterans Hospital in Rocky Hill. And Lions bring all kinds of things that veterans might need um, for daily living. And we make donations to that. And we, we at each meeting, we collect items for um, distri distribution at that event. It's really a, a cool thing, and the Legion is really excited about that, and they're really behind us on it as well. Um, so we've gotten some Legion members to join the lines because of that, but it's really something that we feel is important to help serve the veterans in, in our community. As far as fundraising goes, um, a couple of biggies are the Christmas tree sales that you all know about and, and help support for sure. Um, our other big one was the Mother's Day hanging basket sale. That's, that's the, uh, another really big event. We also have a golf uh, tournament coming up. We have a bird sea sale, Easter candy sale. Um, we do things like um, sell hot dogs in front of Geislers for donations. And we might go to the, um, the baseball team, the yard goat game, and, and uh, work there for donations. So there's a lot of different uh, streams of income that um, come into our club, and it all goes out. So whatever comes in goes out. And in, kind, in this year's donations, um, we took in as much as we gave out, So it, it, and plus all the services that we provided. Um, as far as uh, club administration, we received, we're recognized um, throughout the state as being an excellent Lions Club. Our district governor is coming to our meeting tomorrow night. Um, every time we go to an event, oh, Granby Lions, you know, we hear such great things about you. Um, so it's really great to be part of such an active and growing club. Just a couple things I didn't mention. Um, we were part of 23B, zone three is, is our group. Um, the, the state is divided into uh, three districts and A, B, and C, so we're part of B. Uh, and we have state conventions and all that, so we all know each other and we work on projects together as well. And that's where we're going. Um, as we progress into, into next year, we're always looking on how we can help the residents of Grampy. Um, that's really our, our primary focus. Uh, and if anybody you know, is in need, um, we always ask them to you know, see the services in town um, and they'll let us know if there's, if there's need. Um, but we will go about um, and continue to make donations and, and serve the people of our community as well as the greater Hartford community. Is there any questions about what the Lions do or, or what we stand for? It's just uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to present to you and to our town on all the great work that the Lions do. I'm just very happy to be uh, president uh, for, for this year and this upcoming year. And I think our energy is, is really contagious, and it's, it's really a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Oh, don't go anywhere yet. No, <laughs> we'll start down this. Um, just a statement, really. I mean, thank you for what the Lions do. I only see a fraction of it. The early childhood vision screenings that I see as a doctor are very helpful, and it's very helpful for the, the child in their, you know, furthering of their education if you catch something early, which you guys do quite often with the device that you have. Yeah, so that little machine is really great. Yeah, it's very and much it's easy to use. And yeah, no, it's, it's terrific, and like I said, it, for that kid, it can change their educational trajectory, for sure, if you pick up a vision problem that early, so. And it's always surprising to us. We always find some. Oh, uh, you know? Well, but yeah, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. I didn't realize how wide your reach was, so uh, it was interesting to learn that, so thank you. Yeah, more and more so. You know, there's there's great need in, in all of our area. 
I'll just echo it to Tony. I, I, I want to just share a quick story. So I'm a member of the Lions, and I, um, I think Tony did a great job of kind of summarizing. That's not even a complete list of all the official things they've done for Grammy in the last year, but something I watched the club do unofficially, and it's just a, a common example, is I think Chief Samson came to make a presentation a few months ago, and he had just mentioned in passing that you know, occasionally they, when they're out, they see families in need. And the club didn't hesitate to say, whenever you see that, you let us know what you need and we'll get you what you need. Um, so thank you for all, all you, you do. Well, it's the people of Granby that really support us, like, that allow us to have the funds to help others. So it's not, it's, it comes, the, the Lions volunteer and they manage the funds coming in, but it's the, the people of Granby that support our fundraisers that really the money's coming from. So it's thanks going to the people that support our fundraisers. Simply thank you for the uh, contribution to the community and the support. It's uh, it's had a lot of work, and we certainly appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Very interesting presentation. I didn't realize that the Lions and Granby did so many things. You sound like you're very busy. Are you having success um, attracting younger members to the organization? Well, younger. <laughs> um, I, I'm getting my cronies to to join uh, for sure. So. Uh, yeah, we, we're trying to uh, attract younger members because the work that we need to do is, is could be heavy at times, moving the Christmas trees and, and all that. Um, and people are busy, you know, especially as they're raising families and such. Um, but there's no, like, age that you, you could, should think about joining Lions. We're, we'd love to have people of, of any generation. That just adds diversity to, to our, our club meetings. And I think there's a lot of hype at our meetings now. Like, people are talking before and after, and um, it's <coughs> not static. Um, and there's new ideas being presented all the time. So um, there's plenty of room for growth, and uh, we'd love to have more members. Great, thank you. Sign you up, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you an application. <laughs> yeah, I fit into that younger category. <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh, just uh, thank you for all the operational things you do. But um, it's easy to see the uh, capital things you put in, like the gazebo. And thank you for offering to work on benches down at our new walk in the uh, town park. So thank you. Of course. Thank you all very right, much. Else, Thank you. All right, the next item on our agenda is consideration of a request from the Simsbury Granby Chamber of Commerce for the sale and consumption of alcohol at Sandenbrook Park during their annual event. Celebrate the that. There is a memo. This looks pretty straightforward. Mike, do you know if there's any, this is familiar to us? Is there anything new this year that you're aware of? No. This is the uh, same Celebrate the Valley as in past years, and they are moving forward with it. Anybody have any questions or concerns? If not, I would accept there's a motion in our backup. I'll move that the Board of Selectmen approve the Chamber of Commerce formal request for alcohol sales and consumption for Celebrate the Valley during the September 20th from 5 to 9 p.m. and September 21st from 11 a.m. to 9.45 p.m. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, the next item on our agenda is um, reservation of a special request to alcohol permit. Again, um, Backup contains an explanation of the user and uh, what they've done to get this far. There are no questions or concerns. There's a motion that I would entertain. I'll move the Board of Selectmen approve Ms. Alino's formal request for alcohol consumption during the event rental on Sunday, September 24th, 2024, from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Second the motion. Any other discussion? Yes, can I interrupt? Uh, the date should be Sunday, September 15th. So if the maker of the motion yeah. uh, would amend that in the second, uh, accept that friendly amendment. Oh, okay. That's fine. Sun se Sunday, September 15th, 2024, from 12 p.m. I, I accept the second. Okay. Maybe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? 
All right, the next item is um, UPSEU Local 424, Unit 4, I'm sorry, Unit 49, our Public Works contract approval. Again, uh, Mike has done a memo for our backup that highlights the um, agreed upon provisions. You want to highlight anything further, Mike? Sure. Uh, again, mostly for the folks in the audience, uh, this is the Public Works Laborers contract. Uh, it covers about 14 members. The length of the contract is five years. The salient points are the PPO insurance plan, which is uh, extraordinarily costly, will no longer be offered, ceasing on June 30th, 2024. It will be replaced with a high deductible health plan where single individuals pay the first 2,000 and non-single pay the first 4,000. That'll be effective July 1st, 2024. That should see our medical costs be driven down substantially. The high deductible health plan premium will be a flat 15% across the board through the life of the contract. The town will seed uh, for the first two years 100% and then in year three 75%. Uh, year three and four, uh, I'm sorry. The contract expired June 30th, 2023. The initial negotiations were not productive, so the State Board of Mediation and Arbitration assigned mediator Sean Lennon to assist, and that resulted in this agreement. Uh, we negotiated this contract in compliance with MIRA, which is the Municipal Employees Relations Act. Uh, that means once the bargaining units uh, ratified it, we have 14 days to get it to you. You don't need to act on it tonight. You have 30 more days. So you can, uh, if you wanted to, this can go through July 3rd, 2024. Uh, there's a proposed motion, and I just, uh, before the board acts on it one way or the other, I want to thank Finance Director Kimmy Chang, HR Director Krista Schaefer, and then Management Analyst uh, Betsy Mazada, who helped in the negotiation of this. And finally, I want to offer thanks to uh, the folks from the bargaining unit. Uh, it was productive and professional once we got down to the negotiations. Their contributions as hardworking public works laborers should not be missed by this community. Anybody have any questions? I just had one. Um, just out of curiosity, on the holiday schedule, it, the town doesn't the town employees have Juneteenth off? They do not. They do not. No, uh, we maintained that 13 holidays. There are 11 so listed, and there are two that are up to the employee well, to take. Okay. And uh, the discussion was, can we have a 14th holiday? And the answer was no. There's, we'll stick to 13. If you want to swap one out for Juneteenth, you can. Nobody chose to, so we're, we've held the line at 13, and there's some flexibility with two floating holidays. Okay, makes sense. Any other questions, comments? I would um, echo Mike's comments um, about our public works team and the bargaining unit. Very grateful for their willingness to sit down and work through these issues. Um, if everybody's comfortable, I would accept. The proposed motion. Um, I'll move that the Board of Selectmen approve as presented the uh, attached United Public Service Employees Union Local 424, Unit 49, collectively bargained labor agreement dated July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2028, and to further direct the town managers to sign and execute the contract and to make any funding transfers necessary to effectuate the terms and conditions of the contract. Second. Any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, next item on our agenda is American Rescue Act, also known as ARPA update and reallocation. I'll let you go in a second, Mike, but again, our backup. Um, Mike's done a great job of detailing it. Uh, we've been talking about this uh, for some time. So for those in the audience who've kind of been following it, um, we um, went through a process a couple of years ago to identify some priority projects to spend. We had about $3 million in ARPA funds to spend. 
We went through a process to uh, initially prioritize those projects. The vast majority of them were complete. We knew once we completed those and we had firmed up costs on a couple of others that we would have to make an additional allocation. So we're going to go through the process of doing that. We have about $1.6 million to reallocate. Very generally speaking, the, the list that the team has put together is uh, just what we've been discussing. Uh, where we've identified items on our capital improvement plan that we would prioritize and spend some offer money on because there's a deadline, so it makes sense to spend it there. And one or two of them I, I recognize at least as being um, lower priorities on our initial list. So uh, my intent is tonight, if you have any, any general questions or questions tonight, to get them out but to give everybody a couple of weeks to kind of examine it. We're gonna spend some time on it at our next meeting. Uh, we'll, we'll go through every project, make sure everybody fully understands the scope as we understand it now. I will um, probably, we'll, we'll agendize it uh, as a workshop so the public can also provide any feedback that they have. Um, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Mike. Uh, as I said, there's, Mike's done a great job of not only making the presentation of, uh, um, some suggested reallocations, but walking us and the public through the entire history. So if you're following, you can, the backup contains just about the entire history of how we got here. So. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, just a few comments. Some will echo those you just made. Uh, the town related to COVID relief was in possession of 3.6 million, 3.555 exactly. Uh, you've already allocated in phase one and virtually completed 1.9 million of various projects and it runs from AEDs to emergency communications to middle school HVAC and so on and so forth. That leaves 1.647 million uh, to allocate in phase two and there is some urgency because we have until December 31st, 2024 to obligate these funds. Obligating is a little bit more than just issuing a purchase order. It's almost issuing a contract. So we're a little bit under the gun. Granby falls under what they call the $10 million final rule, whereby the full allocation can be treated as lost revenue, allowing us to direct the reallocation to general government administration. Two, key, two important things to keep in mind. ARPA funds cannot be used directly or indirectly to reduce taxes, and they cannot be used to pay down debt or fund pension liabilities. So phase two projects which are being put out uh, to you for digestion and then perhaps for public comment include technology investment focusing on uh, replacement of old technology, some audio and visual equipment to enhance the resident experience, consultants to work for various town development projects, a considerable amount of capital items, about two thirds uh, of the 20 or so items related to public works, parks and recreation, police and library capital items that will check off the 10-year capital plan once they're done. And then as a catch-all, just so we fully exhaust the allocation, we're not advocating for more road paving, just a different funding source in the event we have to use it. That would be determined at the end, but again, it's a catch-all to make sure that we fully obligate the funds by the end of the year. So happy to take any questions, but uh, the attached memo in the worksheet with it uh, is pretty self-explanatory. And at the next meeting, I'll be able to go into a deep dive on any one item, and the directors will be here to speak to it as well. Any questions tonight? I would ask you guys the courtesy if, um, to, to take, as you're reviewing it, and to go back and look at the, our food capital plan, and if, if you want to advocate that something that's on the plan be put on this list that's not on the list, let, let Mike know as soon as you can so that our, we can have the right people here to discuss the details of that. Does that make sense? The capital plan that he's going to give us next time or the one that's out there? Um, ours hasn't changed, so it's the one that's out there. So our half of it is the same. Everybody good with that? No. All right, we'll move on to the next item, um, which is consideration of an RFP for the Grandy Center Master Plan. Um, again, I will take a quick stab at this and then let Mike fill in the gap. So you guys will recall that um, after a series of meetings and public outreach, 
Um, and I think we did at least one joint session between our Planning and Zoning Commission and the uh, Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen um, established the Granby Center Advisory Committee and gave it a charge. Um, we have been working over the last six months, plus or minus, to uh, complete the initial charge, getting outreach to develop sort of a vision and a list of um, issues that were important to our community as we consider the um, the center. Um, you'll um, also probably remember that our plan of conservation and development specifically calls for the center to be the the focal point of our, our growth in town. So the committee's recommendation is that um, we hire a consultant to help us actually develop a usable, workable master plan for this center. Um, based on the input we received, and um, you will see that the funding for that, or an estimate for the funding that is one of the items on the ARPA list that we're gonna consider. Whether we approve it or not, um, the, we might as well do the RFP. Um, to get get a feel for if there are consultants out there that are qualified to do it and what they would charge. So, um, anything to add, Frank? No, uh, other than, you know, we, we used our best judgment when we allocated a portion of the ARPA. Uh, if the if the ARPA uh, consultant money doesn't pass, we would have to find another bucket if you want to move forward. But again, that's a decision for two weeks from now, but they're interrelated. Um, I do like to move things concurrently rather than serially. When you move things serially in a municipal environment, it takes longer. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, it makes a lot of sense to kick off the RFP and then deal with the funding uh, in a couple of weeks. Any questions? Comments? Um, I noticed that the draft RFP doesn't include a number. A cost. Um, do they typically include a not to exceed number, for example? And you just wait till the proposals come in. I have not ever seen one where we say you have to come in under this number. That we ask everybody to give us their best and final quote. Um, I think that's the way this is kind of played. Uh, I'll just add an editorial comment. Uh, too often, sadly. I see the consultants come in and say, how much do you have? So to the extent that we don't set a budget, I think it's better for the integrity of the project. Good point. That's good. Okay. Well, if everybody's comfortable, there's a proposed motion which just um, uh, authorizes the issuance of the RFP. Anybody willing to make that motion? I'll move that the Board of Selectmen approve the issuance of an RFP for the Granby Center Master Plan. I need a second. Second. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Next item on our agenda is our town manager's report. Take it away, Mike. A few items to pass along. Uh, in the package dated June 1st was a four-page management letter. Uh, I won't go into the uh, specifics, but there's a few items I want to highlight for those that are listening at home. Uh, you had before you today the uh, public works contract, and previously you had the dispatcher's contract. In the next meeting two or three, we will be sending you the Southern Police and Town Hall Labor Union contracts. I want to thank my partner over there, Scott, who successfully handled the town hall labor negotiations. We're simply exchanging the red line versions. We're waiting on the ratification. Once we pull it all together, we'll have those too. Uh, much like the other settlements, um, there are market at market labor increases in there for the employees. But the important thing is we converted uh, the full town over from the PPO to the high deductible health plan and, and that that will help tremendously moving forward. I'm working on a Payne's refuse collection contract extension. I've invited Payson to benchmark our energy usage and suggested sustainability opportunities. I had the opportunity to meet with Catherine DeVinney. She's the West Hartford sustainability employee on energy strategies. So I'm getting excited about that. 
Um, as we start to clear the deck of, of things that we're working on, uh, we'll do some, uh, what I consider smart things to work on energy and bring some uh, our, our Conservation Commission together and see, see where they want to go. Uh, Abby wants everybody to know that the proposal for freshies is out. It was posted in the Hartford Current and RFP was distributed directly to 12 interested parties. A mandatory site visit for respondents on June 6th at 9 a.m. to tour the building. Proposals are due July 10th. The building official issued the last two permits for the Station 280 development. Uh, with respect to the finance department, Kimmy has completed preliminary audit work for the fiscal 24 year, working closely with the auditors, and the final field work will occur in August. Um, something I wanted to highlight for the residents and, and also just bring it to the attention of the board. Out of the assessor's office, we completed 118 state elderly applications, resulting in tax credit benefits of $68,000. And then there were 170 local elderly applications resulting in benefits of 298,000. And those are direct offsets, some as much as, you know, uh, $1,700 to $2,000 that, you know, for the folks that are struggling on a fixed income, there is a tax relief program out there. So I want to shout that from the highest hills. Uh, hey, Mike, you, can I ask a question on that? Sure. Why is the state number so low relative to the local? Um, uh, for, I would have thought it would have been the other way around. Um, it's actually an extremely generous program that the town of Granby has on a local basis compared to the state, which is also income uh, based. But Granby's income, I believe, is significantly higher. They go above, over and above the state program. Got it. Okay. So generally, if you're on the state program, um, you're eligible plus many more for the Granby program. Got it. Uh, Captain Laflamme and Officer Dufresne uh, attended the career day at uh, the high school. Um, that's great because when you can get local uh, uh, young adults interested in careers uh, in their community, that's a only a good thing. Public Works is preparing for the road overlay program once the money becomes available. Uh, library, grateful to have a group of community members. Uh, this is from Amber that volunteer to support a strategic planning initiative, and the group consists of a mix of adults, teens, parents, board, and staff. And then finally, out of San Diego's area, human services, youth services, parks and recreation, senior and social, the waterfront opens on June 15th. Daily hours are noon to four. And our own Terry's and Nikki was honored with the Thomas R. Monaghan Award. The award is the Coaches Association's highest award to professional educators from within the various uh, CIAC and other um, gatherings. It's presented annually to the member of the education profession who has made significant contributions to high school athletics while exhibiting the qualities of leadership, integrity, and professionalism. So shout out to Terry, making Granby look good. Thank you, Mike. Any questions? I have one, Mike. If you don't know the answer to this one, but can you uh, report back to us? So back on the LD um, benefits for the, the uh, tax benefits, do you have a sense for how that compares in previous years, the number of people? Um, very similar. Uh, I've been, Sue Altieri is bringing me up to speed. And I walked around thinking my previous uh, town had the richest benefits, but uh, they are more generous here in Greenby. So the numbers are fairly consistent um, year over year. I'll, I'll try to dig some history just to see if maybe a few years ago they were different, but but I sense it's pretty consistent around 170 and around 300,000 for the local option. Okay. Yeah. The reason I ask is I know um, our Commission on Aging and I know there are a couple other individual uh, volunteers spent a tremendous amount of time about a year ago um, putting together a, a brochure and promoting that benefit to make sure that seniors understood that it was available. And I just wanted to see if it had an immediate impact. That's the reason I asked the question. Anything else? All right, we'll do a quick first selectman report. Just two, two things. Um, I want to say again, um, I'm always proud of our town, but how proud I was of um, our m Memorial Day uh, parade. Most of the towns around us canceled because of the rain. 
Um, we estimate that there were a thousand people, plus or minus, who came out um, to honor uh, our veterans and, and to um, offer their support for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. And um, I'm really glad we did it. I'm glad we didn't cancel it and push through. And, um, just something my wife, Crystal, said to me later in that day. She said, you know, those people didn't come out to see a parade. They came out to honor those who have served and, and sacrificed for our country. And, and because all of them, most of them, followed us down to the, to the cemetery and listened to the speeches in the ceremony. So and if you weren't there, it was a tremendous moment where we, the band had to go home because their instruments were getting wet. So we thought we were going to have to cancel singing the, or playing the national anthem. And somebody in the crowd just said, well, we can sing it. And literally, the citizens of Granby sang the national anthem in the pouring, pouring rain. It was really cool. Very proud of our town. And thank you all for your um, contributions and to the Legion and the Lions and the others who worked hard to make that a success. Um, and then just very uh, quickly, just a reminder, we'll push it out again uh, through the notification system later this week. We have our next open house next Monday, two sessions, one in the morning, one in the evening. I think Fred's joining me in the morning and Kelly's joining in the evening. So just a great no agenda. Come tell us what's on your mind. Ask whatever questions you have, opportunity. So um, that's all I had. We'll start down here. Mark, any report? Uh, no, nothing for me. Thank you. Peggy? Um, just a shout out to the music department in the school system. I went to jazz in the park last Friday, Friday or Thursday, and there were presentations by the Wells Road Jazz Band, and then the Middle School Jazz Band, and then the High School Jazz Band. They were awesome, and there was a nice crowd there. It was a beautiful night. It was a great event, so I hope they continue doing that. Awesome. Nothing? Good. No, just, just echoing what Mark said, it was uh, pretty impressive and always makes me proud of Granby when everyone started singing the national anthem, so it was, it was great. Yeah, you're up. All right, so uh, first things first, uh, the seniors are gradu graduating this Friday. Um, and so graduation is at 5.30, I believe. Um, and after that, we will have safe grads. Wait a minute, so you believe? <laughs> <laughs> I got to make sure on that. We'll get back to us. I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, and after that, we'll have safe grad. Uh, thanks to everyone and every business who donated and was involved. Um, and then Thursday, uh, we'll have the top 10% luncheon for the seniors. And, and then I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys so much uh, again for welcoming me on, the, on this board for the last two years. It's been really incredible and I've learned a lot. So thank you. So despite graduation taking up a lot of everyone's focus, there's still been a lot of success on the sports front as Boys Lacrosse is still going. They're in the semifinals. They're going to play Summers on Wednesday, which is going to be a very uh, hard-fought match. Also, uh, the Halo Awards for the play this spring. Um, sorry, excuse me. The musical this spring saw uh, Luke Renicar win uh, the Best Supporting Actor, and also the our set managers, Ali Dobert, Michaela Munson, and Riley Cooster were all recognized for their excellent work and um, great um, success in the musical this spring. Awesome. Great. Thank do, you. Do you know what the Halo Awards are? No. The, the Halo Awards are like the, the Emmys for Connecticut. That's so awesome. We, we won two of the things for all of the schools in Connecticut. So really good. Yep. It's awesome. Any questions? All right, thanks guys. Good luck. I'm gonna count on you checking in. You're you're coming back, right, Ben? Are you helping to recruit somebody now to sit in the chair next I day? don't know the system. I think it's partly <laughs> done, oh, but yeah. partly me. I don't know. You'll get asked. All right, well we're gonna tell you the system. Go ahead and recruit somebody to replace you. <laughs> well. We want somebody we want someone in that chair when you guys come back. I will. All right. All right, um, next item on our agenda is public comment. Well, I don't see anybody on Zoom from the public. Anybody here want to address us? Questions, concerns, comments? 
All right. We'll close the public session. Um, we do have a need for a brief executive session to get an update on a collective bargaining issue. Um, so I would ask for a motion to take us into an executive session to include the town manager and the board. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're ending our regular session. Thank you, everybody.